This is Independence Hall, one of the most historic spots of all Philadelphia. People refer to this as the birthplace of America. The Liberty Bell used to be here, but now it's moved down the street. But the reason we're here is because Rocky jumped the park bench. His whole life was a million to one shot. That's the story of Rocky, a small time boxer who gets a once in a lifetime chance to fight the heavyweight champion of the world. And he strives to last the full 15 rounds to go the distance. What makes the movie so great is that the character Rocky embodies all of us. It's a universal dream to rise up and triumph over incredible odds. The city of Philadelphia is full of Rockies, regular working class people with big hearts and big dreams. Speaking of Philadelphia, I can't think of another city which has such a close bond to a character. People come from all over the world to run the Rocky Steps, which is obviously the most famous location in the films. But what I want to do is just take you all around the city and show you all the locations from the films that I can find as we explore the phenomenon that is Rocky. The best place to start is Rocky's old stomping grounds in the Kensington area of Northeast Philly. Rocky lived in a rough area town and want to respect the residents, but as you can see, Rocky Street is just as recognizable today as it was in the film. Let's go down a bit. This next corner, this is where Frank Stallone and his buddies sing Take You Back. Today there's nothing left but a patch of grass, so how do I know that this is the spot? Well simple, just watch the movie, you can see it's right down the block from his apartment. This is also where he walks Adrian. Look at the fire hydrant on the corner. Yeah. Today, the take you back corner rests in peace and their voices can be heard like the ghosts of the past. Just a few blocks away from Rocky's place is Marie and Step's house featured in Rocky Balboa. The two abandoned buildings on the right are no longer standing, but other than that, the place looks the same and the background scenery appears just the way it did in the film. Now here we have just an ordinary street except for this drunken guy with a Christmas wreath. Yeah, that's Polly, and this is where he lived with his sister Adrian. Today, the place doesn't look anything like it did in the film. This is also where the entire Balboa family lived in Rocky V. Oh yeah, and that would also mean that this alleyway right here, this is where Polly threw the turkey. Now we're gonna go down to Rocky's most frequented hangout, and he had a pretty fair walk to get down here. So we're under the elevated train tracks, usually referred to as the L. Even during the day, it's always dark down here. But anyway, here we are, Rocky's Hangout. Right behind me is the gym where Rocky trained. It's pretty awesome to be standing here right now. I can almost hear Mickey's voice in my head. Some time ago, the graffiti on the side proudly acknowledged it as Mighty Mixed Gym. Now it's had a big makeover, but the boxing gloves are still there. Also missing is the sign, which was just a movie prop. Today, it's a dollar store, and it never actually was a gym. The interiors were shot in Los Angeles. However, the interior of the pet shop where Adrian worked was indeed a real pet shop and it actually is right across the street from the gym. Unfortunately, it seems like it's had better days. The pet shop seems to be closed down permanently and the only evidence is the fish in the window. We can just stare inside the same way that Rocky did in Rocky Balboa and imagine how things used to be. Well, now you can't even do that. In 2017, the pet shop has been demolished and is now gone forever. Just a sad little update for you. Now, right on the other side of the street from the gym is a pizza shop which served as the bar in Rocky V. This is where Tommy Gunn fought Rocky, right on the streets, right here. Now, out of all the fights that Rocky ever had, this is the only spot where we can stand on the same grounds where the fight actually happened. People come to Philadelphia from all over the world to run the Rocky Steps. So you might just think people come all the way out here to fight. The bar, the gym, and the pet shop are all on the same intersection, which makes it an essential Rocky location. It's been featured in all of the movies except for Rocky IV. But about the bar, this is only the bar from Rocky V. 
The bar from the first Rocky, the Lucky Seven Tavern, is a totally different place. We're led to believe that the Lucky Seven Tavern is revisited in Rocky Balboa, but it looks completely different from the first movie. In real life, it looks the same as it does in Rocky Balboa, the only difference is the sign. It's also another spot where Rocky almost gets into a fight. Here's an update. The location of the original bar from the first movie has been found, but it's no longer there. Like many of the locations, all that's there now is an empty spot. Now what about the meat factory where Pauly worked? In the first Rocky, this is where he demonstrates his unconventional means of training, and in Rocky II, this is where he gets a short-term job. The place is known as Shamrock Meats, which is in Los Angeles. However, on the commentary for the Rocky DVD, John Avildsen and Garrett Brown call it Culver City Meat Company. Of course, I'll take their word, but I found two Culver City Meat Companies, both in Los Angeles and 13 miles apart from each other, one of which shares the same location as Shamrock. So could Culver City and Shamrock be the same place? Or could it actually be three different places altogether? Wow. This is confusing, but is it possible that any scenes from the meat factory were shot in Philly? Well, the sign says Pennsylvania, and an old newspaper article points to the Kensington area at Front Street and Venango, so that's where we're headed. Here all we can see are abandoned factories, which is a main characteristic of this area, but at least we can narrow it down to this intersection. So could this be it? Or maybe this place across the street? It's so badly ripped apart we can actually see inside. Could we be looking at one of the rooms where Rocky punched the meat or packed the meat? Or could it just be wishful thinking? Another unconfirmed location is the ice rink, but it's Rocky's first date with Adrian, so how could we leave out such an important scene? Here's another update. Back in 2008 when I made this documentary, I assumed the ice rink was located in Philadelphia, but the sign overhead was nothing more than a prop. It was actually filmed in Santa Monica, California. Yeah, it was kind of cool that I found a spot in Philly that looked like it could have maybe been an ice rink at one point and happened to be located near Rocky's home area, but this was not it. Now here's a location we stumbled on by accident. It's the bridge seen in Rocky Balboa, as well as Rocky II where he runs across with the kids, and also seen in Rocky III. Does this bridge have a name? It should be called the Rocky Bridge. Next, we're going down one of the bumpiest roads in Philly. This was an easy spot to find because it's the only red cobblestone street that I know of, and I can match its location to where the freight train goes underneath the L. The streets changed a bit, but it's just as run down as it looked 30 years ago. We're now leaving Kensington, thank God, and going down to South Philly to check out some more rocky spots. This is the Spectrum, and I can't possibly tell you how much history it has here in the city of Philadelphia. Many, many events took place, but the reason we're here is because Rocky vs. Apollo Creed happened right here. The interiors were shot in Los Angeles, but in the movies, the represented as taking place right here. Update. In 2010, the Spectrum was demolished. Sad to say, this is another location which now no longer exists. As Rocky comments, it's not far from his house. Of course, we're not talking about his old house in the Kensington area. We're talking about his new home with Adrian in Rocky II. We know the address, but we don't know the street. Unfortunately, there's about 10 to 20 homes in South Philly that look just like it. So this is one spot which I have no lead. Update, the house has been found, especially since the house famously went on sale in recent years and was advertised as the Rocky II house. In Rocky V, this is the school where Rocky's son went, and right on the spot right here is where he fought the other kid. It was over a jacket or something, I don't know, but all we care about is it was a fight. Yo. The Italian market, featured in Rocky, Rocky II, and Rocky Balboa, where he's seen just buying food, just a part of the city like everybody else. Now, uh, rumor has it that in the first movie when he's running, the orange that gets thrown to him wasn't meant to be a kind gesture. Somebody was actually trying to hit Sylvester Stallone. Let's hope the same thing doesn't happen to me. Right here's the famous Pat Steaks. Right across the street is the flashier Gino Steaks, which has become subject of rivalry over who makes the best cheesesteak. But I know how to settle that. Rocky chose Pat's. There's even a plaque that says, on this spot stood Sylvester Stallone filming the great motion picture, Rocky. 
That's right, they should have had plaques everywhere Rocky stood. This here is Victor Cafe, an Italian restaurant that opened in the 1930s. It was used as both the exterior and interior of Adrian's in Rocky Balboa. This is the church where Adrian and Rocky were married in Rocky II. Now it's St. Thomas, St. Thomas Aquinas, St. Thomas Aquinas, St. Thomas Aquinas, I don't know, whatever. It's where Rocky and Adrian were married. Okay, now I'm about to solve the mystery of the atomic hoagie shop. The scene in question from the first Rocky is when he scolds little Marie for hanging out with the bad kids on the corner. The spot is referred to as the atomic hoagie shop and many websites have pointed the location to the Kensington area. They think it's on the same street as the gym, the pet shop and the bar, but this isn't true. Even Rocky V has a different idea. Rocky V puts it right across the block from the school probably because the real location doesn't look anything like it did before. Yes, this is the original Atomic Hoagie Shop. Today, it looks like it's somebody's house. And at first, it might seem inconclusive, but if you follow the geography of the scene, everything fits into place. Check it out. There you have the hoagie shop, the parking lot, and the house. All of Little Marie's hangout in every accurate detail. Now we know why that pole's leaning over, because Rocky threw a punch at it. So that takes care of all our South Philly locations. So let's go check out the rest. We're here at the hospital where Rocky's treated at the beginning of Rocky II, following his fight with Apollo Creed. Back here at the old carriage entrance is where he has one of his best comedic moments. I just call you, I go, hey, yo! Right now we're at Penn's Landing. I can give you a little historical significance, I guess. It's where Rocky ran by. This is City Hall. It was featured in Rocky, Rocky V, where there's a really distinct shot of it. And in Rocky Balboa, it's where the court scene took place. That's William Penn up on the top. Now, originally, William Penn was supposed to be the highest point in Philadelphia. If any building was built higher than William Penn, there would be a curse. A curse that no Philadelphia sports team would ever win a championship or whatever. I don't really know a lot about sports, but basically, there's a curse of William Penn, and nobody could break that curse except for Rocky. This is the convention center. In Rocky Balboa, this is where the press conference was held for the fight. Right now, we're at the Blue Horizon. This is where one of the fights happened with Tommy Gunn in Rocky V. Update, the venue closed in 2010. There's rumors of plans to demolish it, but I'm not sure if anything has happened to it since. This is where Rocky demonstrated his fantastic driving skills. Right here at this store is where he bought his black tiger jacket and possibly the watch for Pauly. Here's the Irish pub. This is where Rocky's son watches the computer fight between his dad and the current heavyweight champion. It's funny that me and my college buddies used to hang out here a lot. So seeing in the film, it was a nice surprise. This is a new building here in Philadelphia. I don't know what it's called. Nobody knows what it's called. But it's where Rocky's son worked in Rocky Balboa. There's a really distinct shot of it. Already, this building gets immortalized in a Rocky movie. We're at the Philadelphia Zoo, actually America's first zoo. Right here in Rocky II is where Rocky proposed to Adrian. Now today it hardly looks anything like it did in the film, but either way, 
It's the best marriage proposal ever. I was wondering if uh, you wouldn't mind marrying me very much. We're here at Laurel Hill Cemetery to pay our respects, but we're not here to visit a real person. We're here to visit Adrian Balboa. Now, you wouldn't expect to walk into a real cemetery and find a headstone for a made-up character. It's not in the same spot as it was in the film, but it's still here. It's a really strange feeling. It's kind of eerie almost, as if while you're standing here, you kind of just feel the presence as if Adrian really is buried here. It's weird. <laughs> So we saw Adrian's headstone, which was at the entrance of the cemetery, but we still weren't satisfied. We wanted to find the actual spot where the headstone was in the movie. Now, this cemetery is enormous, so we're kind of embarrassed to ask, but after looking around for a while, we finally decided to ask one guy, and he was really nice, and he actually led us right to the spot. So this is where Adrian was buried in the movie. Let's take a closer look. So as we can see, this right here, this is the spot where Rocky put the chair up in the tree. This is it. This has got to be it. Right now we're at the jogging trail alongside Kelly Drive. We assume that this is the route that Rocky took to get to the art museum, but in Rocky II, not only is he seen running alongside Kelly Drive, but he's also seen running up the Ben Franklin Parkway to the art museum, which is on the complete opposite side. So basically he just did a lot of insane running. I was actually coming along here and I saw a plaque that said something about Rocky. I'm like, oh, Rocky, oh, no, rock renovation. That's what it said. All right, we're about to begin our walk to the art museum. To get there, we're gonna walk along the Ben Franklin Parkway. The parkway starts right here in the center of the city at Logan Circle and it stretches all the way out to the art museum. Before the 19th century, this used to be grounds for public executions. But today, it's a pretty nice spot, and it was even featured in a running scene in Rocky II. You can see the art museum right up there. You can see the step, and it's got flags on both sides, statue right in the center. It's got this epic feel to it, like this majestic quality. The art museum kind of looks like a Greek temple, and it's like gold and bronze color sort of stands out against the blue sky. Epic. <laughs> We're almost to our destination. The art museum is right up ahead, but just a stop away is the Rodin Museum. I just wanted to show you this because it's featured in the background in Rocky II. Now here lies the second biggest collection in the world of sculptor Rodin's work, number one of course being Paris. But his most famous work, The Thinker, is sitting right out in the front. Now often scholars have debated what The Thinker is thinking about, but I know what he's thinking about. He's thinking about how awesome it is that Rocky just ran by here. We're right across the street from the art museum. We're right in the center of the oval. All the traffic here is sort of like loops around. All right, so you got all these statues up here. You got a moose. Um, I don't know what kind of significance it has with Rocky. Like maybe he's like, Rocky's as strong as a bear. He's as stubborn as a bull and nimble as a deer. All right, we're about to cross the street to the art museum. Now in the movies, Rocky just runs right across. But in real life, it's not that easy. That's pretty shaky, right? Yeah, well, in the movies, they use a steady cam. What's a steady cam? Well, a Steadicam is basically a device, like a camera mount, which reduces the amount of camera movement caused from the camera operator's body. It was invented by Garrett Brown in the early 70s, and guess where his early test footage took place? Right here. And from what I gather, director John Avildsen saw the footage and decided that they had to shoot a scene for Rocky's training montage, right here. Now, because Rocky's training, the steps imply a lot more physical endurance than people usually expect. 
So rocky tourists are often surprised that the steps really aren't that tiring to run. But I guarantee that if you ran from Kensington to the Italian market, to Independence Hall, to Logan Circle, and then all the way back here to the Art Museum steps, I guarantee you'll be pretty tired. Now, these steps must be the most run steps in the history of the universe. Every day, people come from all over the world to run up the steps and do the Rocky Victory Dance at the top. It's actually become a verb to go up and Rocky on the steps. I've been here all times of day and night, three in the morning, six in the morning. There's always somebody here rocking. So what's made these steps so popular? Well, for one thing, they're available. It's not like you can walk the yellow brick road or eat everything in sight in a chocolate factory or ride a DeLorean back to the future, but you can come to Philadelphia and run these steps. Just like Rocky. But that's not what it's all about. It's more than just a tourist activity to act out a movie. When you run these steps, you're sharing a bond with all of us, and you're taking part in a phenomenon bigger than any of us can even understand. One thing that makes the scene so appealing is that it's like a metaphor for somebody's triumph. Rocky runs from the lower class section of town to the more intellectual area. He runs from the bottom to the top, he turns around to face the city which he came and he raises his arms higher than the skyscrapers. The symbolic nature of the shot is astounding and it's the most inspirational image from any film I can think of. I say definitely come visit, but while you're at it, check out the museum. Go inside. There's good stuff in there. A lot of people don't know that. Speaking of art, what about the Rocky statue? Well, here's the story. It was introduced in Rocky III. And after filming completed, a huge debate started whether or not the statue belonged at the museum. People thought it wasn't art and it was just a movie prop. But the statue was eventually moved down to South Philly in front of the Spectrum. It was moved back to the art museum briefly for the filming of Rocky V, but after that it went right back to the Spectrum. For years and years, tourists would come and would be very disappointed to not find the statue here and have to travel all the way down to South Philly to see it. But recently, it's found its home again. In 2006, for Rocky's 30th anniversary ceremony, the statue was brought back to the art museum, but not on top of the steps, to the garden off to the side. The ceremony included a speech by Sylvester Stallone, live music, and a free screening of the movie Rocky right here on the steps. It was really surreal, sitting on the steps, facing a movie screen, with the Philadelphia skyline in the background. It was actually like watching a picture in picture when Rocky was running up the steps. Bringing the statue to the garden, it seemed like a fair compromise, but when you think about it, it's actually more appropriate. The people who run the steps every hour, every day, they serve as the real life Rockies. It's almost like Stallone is stepping down and he's setting an example for all of us to follow in his footsteps.